Sorry. Okay, this is the May 28th core team triage meeting. And the first item on the agenda is the staged RFC, stage design, whatever we call it, Nico. I opened an RFC yesterday, um, uh, which proposes this kind of, actually, hold on. Let me do this. Um, hold on, Let's see if I can figure it out. Can I do it? No, I can't. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, proposes this sort of flow chart for Lang team uh, contributions. The idea being that you you start out by filing an issue with your motivation and your high level, some details, but not too many of what you plan to do. And that might go straight to a PR if it's a simple thing, or it might, you might uh, find someone to work with you and turn that and create a group to turn that into a real RFC. Um, or the group might just be the two of you, but it might be more people. And um, the, the hope is that within these groups, like there will be more communication and more staging, but we have leaving that for the future. <laughs> um, like we already have some amount of staging, but I think that just having a home for the idea is already a place where we can say like, okay, now we're in the design phase, now we're doing implementation. And I think those things all often be a little more intermingled in practice. Um, or have turned out to be quite intermingled sometimes. Um, but that's what the RFC is about. Uh, yes. Do we need to continue tackling this every meeting? Probably not. I don't know. I don't mind. Either way is okay. So just so I understand, so this is for Lang team RFCs. I, I do think that as we think about other parts of the project, at least when I go way back, when I think about like what a staged RFC, uh, what this project meant to me, was trying to figure out how this RFC process could also work for many other things, like including like cargo or crates IO or things like that and like how to expand it to other teams and how things we you know prototype with the Lang team can apply well or maybe would apply really horribly to other teams so I don't know if this is something we want to check in on every week or if we want to have like a sub crew of core team reps to like be checking in on this and like when we hit a spot where we feel like we want to grow this or look at for another team um, to bring it up that way uh, like, I do still think we have larger goals and plans for this project, and we're on step one. So weekly seems like too much, but I don't want to let it drop. I agree with that. I'm going to stage the staged RFC process. Yeah, how like, recursive can we make the process? No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at least conceptually, and that's why I use the same term, applying to the compiler team, although the main difference is that Compiler team like almost always goes down the PR road, and the Lang team sort of almost always goes down the RFC road. Uh, so they're kind of so different as to be. Maybe it's not that useful to think of them as the same thing, but but they all you can also view them as two instantiations of the same template, which I think is useful. Because I would like to get to the point where we have one template. <laughs> Is, that maybe plays out differently in small ways, but totally. Overall. Is this project being tracked by the governance team at all? Yeah, yeah, we've been discussing it there also. Okay. Well, so maybe as long as a team is tracking it, like when we're ready to like go to the next stage, like I guess Nico as the rep of that team, would you be willing to like re add it to the core team agenda, or does that feel like it might fall through the cracks? No, I think that would be fine. I think the there's a next waypoint which we which we will reach, which is basically like the plan with this RFC is we're gonna try this for a while and then and then we're gonna look at all the existing RFCs. Like if it's working well, we're gonna sort of try to bring those existing RFCs into this scope. And that's probably a place where we could check in on how it's working and talk about like is there another team that might wanna experiment with this uh, from that point. Cool. Okay, awesome. I've checked that off on the agenda. 
Uh, the next item is uh, legal issues, um, which we did have a check in mid May and it's now late May, but the world is different now. Um, Florian, do you have anything to report in this area? Yes. Um, I did kick off uh, the discussion. We're currently selecting where we put our, put our documents and make the list that's on that. Um, so the check is done. And um, yeah, I'll, I would keep it tracked for, um, for next week. Sounds good. And the other legal issue we have going is the non-commercial forum terms. I saw some discussion on our trafficking issue. Did you have any updates, Nico? Uh, I don't remember what, yeah, the main up, I guess there's an update, yeah, which is that I talked to the, basically I'm in communication and we haven't, uh, with uh, Mozilla Legal to talk about the ramp, you know, how realistic is it to change this text and what do we want? I have to get back to them now that we have some idea of like what we're looking for that we don't get from the current terms, which seems to be primarily about making it easy to copy and paste into RFCs and other, I guess, other places within the re sort of Rust issues or other places where, you know, licensing terms might come into play. Um, and I'll, I haven't, I haven't actually responded with that. So once I'll do that today and we'll see what they have to say. They did bring up that, you know, there's a lot of comments that were ostensibly written under the old terms that we have to think about. I don't know if that's as simple as saying all comments before this date are under this terms and everything else, but I don't know. Okay, sounds like progress. Uh, next item is white papers, Florian. I'm not finished, but I'm working on it. Okay, uh, the next item is the target tier policy RFC, Nico. Uh, no major updates, except that I followed up a little bit with the Ilumos, Ilumos, or however you pronounce that, people uh, in part of their team, they were requesting to go to tier two, and that's not really about the RFC exactly, but it's in the area. Um, I think we talked about it last time. The, yeah. Oh, one other thing that is relevant is, it's sort of relevant, is um, we're looking to create a kind of group that the compiler team can ping of people who like have a can give us feedback on windows specific questions which is relevant because i want to have similar groups for all the tiers <laughs> anything that we might have to diagnose and support um and so it's kind of it's, uh, santiago and i put about an hour in today of doing all the annoying little things we have to do to make that happen which is almost done and then probably i would want to extend that concept to mm -hmm. other tiers Okay, uh, the next item is a Docsrs blog post about targets, Pietro. Yeah, so basically the Docsrs team is making a change uh, in which uh, only the Linux target will be build, built by default and you, have, you will have to opt in into building other targets, which is a working change because before we were building all the tier one targets. So we want to announce it uh, and we were wondering if this is something that we want to have on the main blog or just since a trust and being bot spammed from, here, from there. Is the plan for this announcement to point to docs to like, you know, demonstrate to people how to opt in and everything like yeah. that? I feel like this would be something to put on the main in blog because I think there's a lot of people who rely on docs.rs who do not read any of our forums. Yeah, I was going to okay. say, this feels like the audience is not people developing Rust, but people using Rust. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'll change the target and polish it up a bit. Is it something we might want an RFC for? Strong. <laughs> like we never did uh, RFCs for docs.rs features. Like, I like, I don't know, honestly. Do we have a sentiment read on how we anticipate people will respond? 
so like basically like we probably should add more like we should uh, investigate that in metrics uh, ex explicitly to see how many pages are viewed by targets uh, or by like get uh, some more statistics uh, maybe probably before making the change but uh, like most of the crates uh, don't really change their content uh, if you are on Linux, uh, Windows, or macOS. Like uh, the only the low-level platform crates should have a difference. Totally, and I I would personally imagine that the actual impact towards end users will be relatively. Yeah, I think that announcing a breaking change that didn't have some sort of community decision process may have an emotional impact on folks regardless of the actual impact okay yeah and so i mean it's a good way to lay out the rationale and you never know somebody might have some good suggestions for how to make it better uh mm -hmm. it definitely happens it's probably i do suspect you know the outcome will it will be the same yeah but except there might be some improvements along the way like maybe a better way to, i don't know i have no idea better way to opt in or whatever plus that you can point at the RFC later and say, yeah, we decided in RFC XXYZ that we're going to make this change, um, which is important. Yeah, it would be okay. a good way to just historically document it. That's another thing. Okay, like, yeah, we started with a really lightweight RFC plus inside the, the Docs.rs repository just for internal changes to Docs.rs, much like the major change proposal in the, the compiler team is doing. But like, yeah, these impacts uh, the whole, uh, like impacts more. Like I'm not the one proposing it, this change. It was from the other Dr. S Khalid uh, and one of the, the members uh, of the team. And they were asking whether you should post on the blog. So I brought it up inside the core team. Uh, and uh, now I sort of agree with, with, with your rationale. So I bring the news to them and uh, maybe mentor them into writing a good RFC. Feels appropriate to me. <laughs> Good. All right. Any other items for the public part of the agenda? Okay. Uh, 